welcome, RC Shim in the hangar. Today we will talk about Creality's Scan Ferret Pro 3D scanner on this nice little tripod, Wi Fi bridge, and this is the actual scanner. This is the, the important part here with an USB connection. I had a lot of questions. In the past I saw that 3D scanners for the consumer market were either very expensive or didn't work or both at the same time and that's very frustrating. Those are not industrial grade scanners, they cost tens of thousands of dollars. Do they actually work as a tool for us 3D printer enthusiasts or maybe for you Unreal Engine assets generating guys? We will find out in this video. So, as I said, I had a lot of questions. Why the hell do we need a Wi-Fi bridge there? Why not connect the scanner via USB-C cable to the phone and leave this complicated technical part away? The answer is compatibility. In theory, it works with my Galaxy S10 that I have here. It's an older phone. It doesn't work reliably because this USB connection is rather slow still on my phone, not the scanner. On things like iOS devices, I don't think that you can something into the lightning port. And it's in a Wi-Fi 6 configuration here because it has to transfer a lot of data. Now it's time for the obvious disclaimer. I get this scanner sent from Geek Buying. They sent it to me for free. They have no influence on my video. You decide to buy this thing and use my affiliate link. I will earn a small commission. It doesn't cost you any extra. Very much appreciated. Make sure to also use the coupon code to get it a bit cheaper. I think it's 379 euros. Yeah, a lot of the cables that I used here. The tripod, those cables, those tracker points. USB-C to USB-A adapter, cable for computer, for rechargeable handle, power cable for the wireless bridge, and scanner to wireless bridge. This quick start guide and the warranty card, and of course this nice little box. I like how tightly they packed everything together into this box. You have all the cables up there. Phone clamp, battery grip that you turn on with one press and turn off with a double press. USB-A out and USB-C in, that's important. The USB-C is for charging the grip just. This is powering the Wi-Fi bridge or your phone or both at the same time if you get the right cable co combination. A to C, this better USB 3, A to USB 3, C. <laughs> the phone clamp mount and then this little pivot mount on a hot shoe interface. You can get this out here or you can get it out at this section. Pretty modular and that's something that I really like a lot. Wire cable and a little USB-A to USB-C adapter. And that's very important. That's the only way how I got the USB-C connection to work directly with my phone. That's maybe, that's an important tip. That's the only cable, not the long one, not another USB-C cable, just this cable, this adapter, plugged in directly into the phone. I had to turn the adapter around, so try them both ways, those adapters. And then the app started, and yeah. I should probably show you a screen recording now. On the bottom, you can set up your scan settings. The object size, large, medium or small, if it's a face or a body scan. Geometry is if you scan a, like a sculpture, a very complicated mesh. Texture scanning is it's flat if you look from the IR camera, but it's feature rich if you look through color. So I think it just decides which camera to use, keep track of the object. Or the third option would be to use markers. For example, if you want to scan large objects like your car, apply little stickers so that you have additional features. Fast is on larger scanners, high quality is a default for the small. Color is just useful if you want to use it as a 3D object in a computer game or if you maybe plan to print it in color later. For my normal application I always chose no color to keep the processing times low because the processing times are not really low. Yeah, you see, that's a good example of speed. So today it works because I think the battery of the phone has to be as full as possible. You see, it gives me tips, closer or further away, let's just hit start scanning and then I have here my lazy Susan turntable and it works best if you start so from 45 degree looking down to the object and get a good first round and it looks quite good now. 
course, let's pause this for a second. Of course, if we look the preview, you can zoom in, we still have a few holes because, yeah, that's an easy object to scan, but still, yeah, on the bottom side of this heart, you see it's still uh, hollow. Let's bend this, pivot this back so I can scan from the below and try to continue the scan. Now it's the question, does he pick up? Yeah, now he got track of the object again and slowly go down so he doesn't lose the track. And, um, and now that's the one thing that I have a lot with this thing. It might be a loose connection on my phone, that's default here. Yeah, so that's how far we get with the USB-C on an old phone. Maybe my USB-C connection is wobbly. So that's why if I had to use my phone I would still prefer the Wi-Fi and that's the compatibility issue. On their webpage they state Galaxy S20. So that's one generation newer than my phone. Maybe it works better with modern phones. To be mobile you can also use your laptop and the Wi-Fi bridge. So you have no cables tangling around and you need to stay close to your laptop because you need to see if it still has tracking. So you cannot go crazy far. Or you have a second person. But I would still prefer to use the USB 3 connection going from the camera to the laptop because then the preview on the laptop is way smoother and then it's easier for you to keep track of it and also for the program because if it has more frames it is easier to keep track of the features. If you can always use the longer USB 3 cable either with a laptop or with a powerful PC. i7-8650 laptop that kinda works. It has 16 gigabits of RAM. If you have a more powerful laptop that works for sure. Older laptops can be a bit of a pain because not only the scanning takes some time but also then the point cloud processing and the meshing of the object. Although there's one little dip, if you reduce the resolution on scanning, then you get smaller point clouds, smaller mesh files and the result may, may still be okay for 3D printing. I can show you a comparison now of uh, lower quality, faster processed and higher quality slower thing here now. Let's talk about software options. Of course you have Windows PC, laptop. You have Mac OS version of the credit scan, an Android version, an iOS version. So pretty much oh, you get no Linux version, that's one. The software is a bit hard to find. There's a link in my description with the starting page for the software download. Make sure to download the latest version of the Windows or Mac software because the software is really where this device can be improved in the future and has been improved since this came out last summer and in December it got a really that much better software that you can see from older reviews they were all struggling with what software. So the software evolved and I'm glad it's better now because it's still not easy to use but it has a lot of features that make our lives as 3D scanners easier. While the scanning process is fairly nice and smooth on my PC and on my laptop, the optimization of point cloud and the generating of the mesh took quite a lot of time. Took a look in the task manager and saw that from my i9-9900 processor, a quite decent rig, it only used 20% of CPU power and 0% of my RTX 3070 graphics card. So there's a lot of processing power in my PC that's not used but I still need to wait for the software to optimize. So there's a lot of potential for making this process faster. The hardware itself, I think it's decent. The software can still be improved. I wanted to have enough time to form a good review for you and supply a lot of scanning tips because there is a learning curve but if you consider my tips from this video maybe it's easier for you from the start. So tip number one use a round table for scanning. The cheapest option is something like this lazy Susan that you have on your table. It's something from IKEA you can even. It's nice that you place the object on it and turn it slowly, that way you don't have to move around with the camera itself. That's an incredibly helpful tool for 3D scanning. If you don't have this available at the moment, you can also go to your microwave and get out this microwave plate and the little wheelie thing below it and use this at the moment. And then start scanning, uh, looking down on the round table, make a few laps and then move the camera down and always look at the screen and try not to lose tracking. If you lose tracking you need to move back until it gets green and then you scan and slowly turn. It's a bit, it needs a bit of training but yeah, it can also be very satisfactory uh, to make such a scan. 
That's something that I learned too. If you have complex parts, like I had a scale model of a Porsche, and if you scan these, you, yeah, you have a hard time scanning the bottom side of the car. So it might be helpful to scan this in two parts, like scan it from the top and from the sides, and then place the car upside down and scan the bottom to get the exhaust pipes and everything, every, every detail. And you can combine those two scans in the Creality Scan software on PC. Then you can auto align it or make alignments yourself. Just know there's a feature to combine two or more scans into one scan. If you have one complicated part and you're happy with it, save it, have enough light. Because those cameras need to recognize objects. Of course, be slow and steady. Don't move around too much and too, too quickly. Although they have anti-shake or stabilization features in the software, but yeah. And in the scan, use the close object. So you have easier objects, easier to be printed in 3D objects. If you scanned more than you wanted, you can cut it away directly in the Creality Studio with this mesh tool. If you forgot to cut it away there, you can also use your normal slicer to cut it away. Generally, 3D printing slicer, which is free software, is a pretty good place to work on scanned objects. Even if you don't plan to print it out for 3D printing, you can use a slicer to turn the object, to cut things away, to scale it and whatnot, and then save it as a 3MF file. Finally, you can also use your phone app and your PC together. You can scan parts on the phone and then send it from the phone to your PC. On the PC, you need to say import from phone and then you get a QR code and you scan it with the phone app and then it sends it over Wi-Fi. Things like this here, this wooden figurine is one of the easier things to scan. That's my 3D printed result. I even printed it a wood PLA composite. I printed it with a 0.6 millimeter nozzle, so it's a bit of a, a rough print. But still, it was one of the first objects that I printed and that worked really nice. For me, it was more a, a test of the wood filament, to be honest, but I was surprised how well this worked. This mountain goat came out pretty darn good. 3D print. I have to hold it like this because I printed it in 75%. Once again, wood filament, a bit of stringing. Pretty happy with this result. Stone material works really nice. So for your first trials, get some scanner training with easy object lag, like these things here. So the million dollar question, should you get this device? If my review was helpful, then you should know by now. I love tech and I love this device and it's now an additional tool for me. I love to design things just in on shape by measuring and designing them. And this works for easier parts very well. If you have complicated surface parts, you cannot measure them really. There are 3D scanners really nice. You create like a mount on a handlebar. And it just fits perfectly. And that's something that you can only achieve with either a 3D scanner or by meticulously measuring the part and designing it for ages. Digital assets, then you can maybe even sell on platforms online 3D objects for computer games. Thanks a lot for watching this review. If you found my channel today because you searched for this 3D scanner, the channel is normally uh, all about drones. I'm an RC nerd, RC Shim, that's my name. I love drones, but I also love 3D scanners. I love cameras, new tech in general, and I will review stuff that's interesting for me because that's the motivation. Thanks if you consider to subscribe to this channel. By now, I guess I have earned your thumbs up to this video. And if you still want to buy this thing, because yeah, my review helped you, please consider using my affiliate link if you think I've earned the little bit of commission that I get for it. Thanks a lot, very much appreciate it. See you next time, bye for now.